Okay, uh, so let's take a look into next example of uh, let's motivate uh, usage of uh, generics. So suppose you would like to design like uh, there is a need like for you to use something similar like two tuples that we have in uh, Python. The reason for that like could be well, the reason for that could be pretty different. Like for example, it could be that you need to have like some type of immutable container that for example you should use as a key of the hash map or there could be like any other reasons um, and you don't know in advance like what type of object would be stored in uh, that tuple so you want to have like something pretty uh, similar to this uh, container that you have in Python so if you don't have the specified tuple uh, type, uh, the first idea that could came to your mind is uh, to actually use a pretty generic class. And the design of that class would be actually as it's shown in the picture in the, in the screen. So you will put uh, uh, that a first like variable, the first attribute is object, and you will also put a second uh, variable uh, attribute also uh, as object and then like you will uh, put like this object in the class uh, in the constructor definition and here's actually come a problem when you would uh, when you would create like the object there will be no issues when you would try to extract like the object, then you would have actually an issue. Our like class, it doesn't have like any information, no information if passed into it uh, about like what type of objects we actually have here. Uh, so we then need like each time to, when we are extracting like this attribute, we need to uh, explicitly like specify as a class that we want to extract. The issue with that is actually that we need to remember what class was there and we also need to uh, put it all the time when we are extracting that. That doesn't sound uh, like a pretty, as a pretty good idea. Uh, the next issue with this design is that if you accidentally will put instead of uh, one as a string you will accidentally like or even like here like you put it like one as a string but you expected that integer uh, it should be an integer so if you put it here you will uh you will not like receive any error you see that like i have like here a first attribute actually a string but i'm extracting it as an integer and intellij actually didn't like identify me that this is an error and that's the reason because uh, that for the reason that actually on compiled time such errors are not catched and then they could appear like only on the runtime as later like our error occurs as much much uh, as more like uh, cost like costs like time we would need like to correct it so uh, we need to have a mechanism that would ideally on compile time would check us uh, what type of variable we have passed um, so one of the ideas that could probably could came to your mind uh, come to your mind is actually use um, uh, actually use a specific uh, type declaration like in first and for first and for second attribute and with that uh, approach there is like one like huge problem the problem is that for each combination of classes of 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 object types of attribute types like you will need like to create its own uh, object and that doesn't work if oh, your own class its own class and it doesn't work well and that's for the reason that like you will need like to write like the same code once and once again and you will have a lot of code duplication and at some point it will hard start hard to 
uh, manage this code and uh, if for, you could forget that like you, ch you did a change like in one class and you need to do the change in another class. So this approach like uh, will resolve like issue with types uh, casting and with uh, types checking but it will not like resolve an issue with code reusability. So you want to have some approach that would actually help you also to resolve like this code reusability approach, uh, code reusability issue. And the solution for that is actually generics. And uh, let's take a look how like generics are solving this problem. So there is a possibility to parameterize uh, class definition in Java. So uh, in class definition, you, you may specify actually a types uh, that you would use inside the class and you would use in, step, uh, in the step of class, uh, uh, class usage. Uh, so uh, here, like, let's take a look. So we uh, specified class T and S and uh, we identified like a first variable, we mark like the first variable with class T and the second variable with class S. Then uh, within the constructor, we also reused like this definition, this uh, parameters, parameterized type T and S. And then uh, uh, in the same manner as is done on function, uh, uh, and then like on uh, step of object definition, we pass like some variables here, like integer and string, uh, some types, some classes here, like integer and string. And this integer and string are like replaced here in all places uh, where like T and S are used what this actually will allow. First of all, as you may see, you will not need to specify directly which type like this attribute is. As uh, actually GVM like compiler, they know like that this like first variable based on what you uh, defined like is integer and the second variable is string. For example, if I will change here like a first uh, uh, a first argument to string, even IntelliJ will tell me that like that's probably, that's actually an error and expected like an integer variable here. Uh, and additionally, you may reuse like this code for uh, as many like combination of classes as you want. So just to create a new uh, class, you will actually need like to uh, change uh, in the object creation uh, types that you want to be stored there. For example, if I want to have like two uh, strings, I can easily replace like the integer with string uh, and then like there will be all the checks done, all the uh, checks on retrieved part done uh, and like actually this code like will be reused like for these types.